Welcome family and friends to Lunchtime with Leona. This is going to be a great time today. You know, we are right here in the midst of spring and we're looking forward to a few days of warmer temperatures. And I know some of you have uh, shared with me that we are just at that point where our weather across the nation is all over the place. But you know what? It's warm in here warm in here and we are all about taking care of ourselves our family our friends and our community so we're going to be working today we're talking today about the home cook and most of all we're going to be taking a look at our um one plan for one month and we're going to be doing it together. And, you know, it's always fun to be able to do that and to think together and try to bounce ideas off of each other. Hello, hello. Hi, Marlene. Glad to see you. And uh, hopefully you got your pencil and paper because we're going to be working together. You know, most of the time I try to do all the research and come up with fun um, meal ideas and things to do. And today I wanted to think back, you know, as we look at our families, whether it's our daughters, whether it's our granddaughters, whether it's a friend who may be next door, um, very often we have young home cooks that are in our midst. And so they're looking at, at our kitchens, especially those of us who have been cooking for a while and those of us who are really well seasoned in the, in the kitchen. And, uh, oh, thank you, Marlene, thank you. Um, you know, as, as we look at, at them, we want to be able to share with them some of our ideas. And what I found is that in talking to some, uh, I was doing a little talking, talking to some of the girls at church and uh, yesterday in particular, and I was, I was talking, them, talking to them about what were some of the favorite things that they liked to cook in the kitchen. And, you know, they, you could just see their faces. It was like <gasps> terrified and I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to survive. I'm just trying to survive. I'm just trying to put some food on the table. And I thought, you know, for those of us who have somewhat of a repertoire as far as those things that we'd like to cook, it would be fun for the month of May. You know, since this is Mother's Day, hello, Patricia. Uh, it would be fun to be able to put together a meal plan that is geared with the new and very young home cooks. Because, you know, sometimes their ideas and our ideas, we may kind of all be on the same page, but when they start to get into the kitchen, it's a little difficult and it takes a little more. So today, hello, Tutu, we are going to, um, we're going to look at that and um, talk about some of those meal ideas. Now, I've got a few ideas of those things that I can think back in that when I was a really new cook in the kitchen, and, 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 I'm, and, and I, you may have been here sometime when I've told the story of uh, the fact that uh, my mom was a great cook, and um, I really, I really, just envied the fact that she could go in that kitchen and she could whip up those meals and have things on the table. And, you know, at this point, we want to be able, whether we're new cooks or more seasoned cook, cooks, we want to be able to put food on the table. And let's face it, none of us want to have to spend hours 
trying to put one meal together. And the only time we really want to do that is if it's a holiday, so a special day. And even at that, we're trying to streamline that. Hello, hello. So glad to see all of you at lunchtime. Uh, come on and sit down at the table because we're going to talk about quite a bit today. So um, like I said, we're focusing on those, this month for one plan for one month. We're going to put together a plan that's that I think once we get it all together, it's going to be uh, a just basic plan, you know, a basic plan that we can put out there that literally if we know someone who's getting married, hasn't hasn't ever been married and uh, they haven't had an opportunity to get into their kitchen really other than a week or so, if or not at all, then as we're putting together those wedding gifts, we can slip a basic plan into the gift box and say, here's some fresh meal ideas that might help you. These are some that, that we've been working through. And so, you know, it's always fun to be able to do that. So we're going to talk about that today. So first of all, before we get in, let me see who all is here. Oh, wonderful, wonderful patience. I hope you can. So we're going to, I'm going to start here. Whoop. And like I said, we're going to um, talk about lunchtime. So we're going to be looking at meal ideas for those young, new home cooks. We want meals that are, number one, going to be easy for them to prepare. We want them to be absolutely delicious. We want them to uh, be customizable so that, um, say, for instance, if they're doing burgers, then this week they'll do burgers. I know burgers used to be my Saturday go to. And so for a very long time, Saturday was burger day. And so then I got to the point where I started to customize the burgers. You know, this week it was a taco burger. Next week it was some other kind of burger. The next week it was something else. So that was because we were able to use different ingredients, different sauces, and just, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove this for just a moment because I want you to be able to see uh, what I was on our, I had on my mind. Now, what would be fun as we're looking at the home cooks, it's also going to pop to us because we're going to want to think about some of those things that we're making plans for in the month of May that we might be able to do the same thing with. So first of all, let's talk about some of the things. When I went into the grocery store this weekend and they were in the, it was so cute because they were in the process of, of uh, doing some switching out and some rearranging in one of our larger stores that uh, I love to go in and just walk because you just never know what kind of fun things they're going to have in there. So some of the things that were new, I spent a lot of time in the produce section. So some new vegetables for the season that were coming out. Beautiful zucchini. The cucumbers looked absolutely beautiful because we know that there's places in the United States and close by that we're able to acquire many of these vegetables for the month of May and get them pretty fresh. And so artichokes are a big item, being able to get artichokes. Even though artichokes are a work in progress of trying to get them, get them taken apart to cook them. And I'll be honest with you, I go to either the jar or the can because it just it takes time to be able to pull that artichoke apart. But fresh green beans were coming in. Uh, avocados looked good and the prices were good. Greens, oh, little microgreens were in the grocery store. I love little microgreens and they're just so cute. They're so tiny and they just add a little something special 
to your plate when you're putting your dinner together or for your salad, whatever it may be. Celery looks so much better because I tell you, for the past couple of months, I really hesitated to buy celery because it just didn't look good. And I didn't want to spend the money on something that already didn't look well. So beets are big. And I know for some of you, you may have a family that they're not going to touch beets. But you know, and I know that uh, beets are so good for us and, that, and very, very healthy. So maybe we can get a little bit in, throw a little sugar on them, you know, kind of uh, do a little pickling to them um, and have some a beet salad. Uh, corn is starting to come in. And this is kind of at the beginning of the corn season for us in, in Virginia. And so we're starting to see more and more corn come out. And those stalks are getting, you know, they're getting larger and larger. So that's great. Uh, bok choy is something that I usually go down to the Asian store and pick up. But now I'm actually able to find them in the regular grocery store and a nice variety of them. Uh, carrots looked beautiful, not just the organic ones. I mean, all of them looked really good. And so that was nice. Uh, leeks are something I have to admit, I really, I like leeks. In, in dishes, but I'm, I just tend not to use leeks a lot. And uh, that's something that I guess over time that I'm going to have to try to work in. Now, I got beets twice. I got carried away with those beets. I'm just, that's a hint. Use the beets. But um, also mushrooms. I love mushrooms and a variety of mushrooms. And you can use them in so many different ways. I like okra and peas, potatoes, and here's my summer best go-to vegetable. Vidalia onions are coming in. And uh, Vidalias, if you have not had Vidalia onions, mm, mm, mm. and the later it gets into summer, the better they taste. They get sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. They are delicious. They are delicious raw. They You talk about those burgers, throw some Vidalia onions on there, and mm, they are good. And so um, they're wonderful for salads. And um, so when you start finding Vidalias in your grocery store, you're definitely going to want to at least pick up, if you haven't had them, one bag and uh, try them out. I certainly encourage you to do that. Uh, another thing is to look at the fruits. I picked up bananas. The bananas were beautiful. They were beautiful. And um, it was so funny. A friend came over the other day and uh, I went into the freezer here at the, see if I can get to it oh, the other way, over at the refrigerator. And um, I had bananas in the freezer. And she said, what in the world? Why do you have bananas in your freezer? And so I wanted to let her know that that's such a good place that when the bananas start to turn, and you know they can turn very quickly, that you can take your bananas, peel and all, put them in the freezer, you know, just have a, a bag that you can throw them into, put them in the freezer. And... I use those bananas for my banana bread and um, I take them out. They're already nice and mushy and moist. And um, I use tools and put those out in the garden or, in, you know, in my pots. And um, it's just a good way to be able to use them while they're fresh and use them after they're frozen in several other ways. So that gives us option with those bananas. And I thought I had brought it over. I bought blueberries and uh, blueberries were absolutely beautiful. They were tasty. I got strawberries. They were beautiful and tasty. Now I didn't get cherries yet, 
but they're coming. But let me show you what I did this weekend. I thought I had it over here, but I, um, I'll bring you back. I had a chance to do a little bit of, well, let's see if I can bring it in, a blueberry jam. So this, uh, this past weekend, I had a chance, a few, I had a little bit of time and I had a chance to uh, do some small batch canning. And uh, so I canned the blueberries. And so I wanted to, I have some friends who have been working with me in my hospitality ministry at church. And I wanted to be able to share uh, a jar of blueberries. So actually what I'm going to do is that I've got the blueberries ready. I'm going to put together some bread. And so they're going to get a little package coming up this Sunday of blueberry jam and a bowl of bread. So they'll have all of that together. And I thought, you know, just something to say thanks for the hard work that they've been uh, doing. Because when I asked them for whatever the project is that we're working on, and we had a, a major project yesterday that we were working on, but whenever I asked them, there's never, never, and no, there's always, sure, what do you need for us to do? And they're ready to go. So, you know, when you have people like that, you want to be able to say thank you. Thank you always. Now, so blueberries. Mwah, they were so good. Strawberries were delicious. Uh, cherries look nice, but now let me brace you for this because they're beautiful, but they're just a tad bit pricey. And so cherries may be something that's a treat. And um, that's certainly up to you. Depends on what you have and what you want to do for that particular week. Now, Lemons and limes are something that I try to keep some uh, lemons and limes both in the refrigerator all the time. Now, for those of you who are in lemon country and lime country, let me know what's the best way to store our lemons and limes. Should we leave them out on the counter in our fruit baskets or should we put them in the, the refrigerator? I was watching... Um, um, I want to say it was the kitchen this weekend and they were talking about, um, lemons and talking about the fact that what one of the, one of the chefs, uh, was saying that she likes to freeze her lemons and that when she freezes her lemons, that she finds that she gets more juice out of the lemon. So she keeps some fresh. And then some she freezes and uh, she loves being able to do that. Now, Nitty T is telling us here that she likes, she loves canning fruits, jellies, and jam. Well, Nitty T, you're going to have to be my go-to person because I am certainly, I, I'm not an expert on canning, but I read directions well. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I want to let everyone know that, um, you know, we're never too old to learn. And so I picked up some used canning books that I found. You'll never guess where they were. At the Goodwill. And I found one that's, that's called Amish Canning and Preserving. It's a cookbook for beginners. Well, I caught it at the Goodwill. But then I thought, well, let me look on Amazon because I have somebody I want to be able to give one to. And I didn't want to get rid of mine. And yes, it's on Amazon. Okay. It was also, also, now this one I did get on Amazon. It's called water bath canning because most of the time, to be honest with you, I don't have a pressure canner, but I can certainly water bath can. I've got pots and, and everything, all the gear that I can use and do water bath canning. And so uh, I thought this would be a good book and a good place to start. So my blueberry jam that I made, I water bath canned. And so um, 
you know, any canning tips and all those things when you see me uh, doing some of those things. Certainly understand, I have no problems with taking uh, good advice of things that we're doing. And I may even be asking some questions of, this didn't go so well, but if it did, then you'll know about it, okay? Now, um, Tutu loves many is saying that her lemons and limes and oranges stay fresher if she keeps them in the fridge in a bag so that they don't dry out. Oh, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that. Now, let me ask you this. Um, do they, uh, can we use a plastic bag, you know, like a Ziploc bag? Um, or do, I, I'm assuming a Ziploc bag would be what we would need because we want to be able to keep the moisture in. Now, should I put a piece of paper towel in there so that there's not too much moisture? Or can I just put them in there and we're good to go? So let me know um, how that works out. But, you know, keeping my lemons and limes. Now, it's funny. The limes tend to go faster. And that's because the big guy uses that lime. I'm sure I've shared with you that the big guy does his um, uh, uh, Bloody Mary every night now it's not it, there's no alcohol whatsoever he just does a virgin bloody Mar mary at night and he likes the tomato juice and all the goodies that go into the bloody mary but he doesn't want the alcohol and of course he wants the lime that little taste of lime to go in there because that just makes it pop and makes it fresh and so limes at our house don't last when summer and spring hit, I typically have iced tea available almost every day. And so lemons go very quickly for me. And plus I use them in cooking. So they don't stay a long time, but they do hang around sometimes a little bit longer. Let's see. She said uh, she uses a plastic bag and she twists and folds over the bag. She keeps them uh, if she keeps them on the counter, you are absolutely right. They can turn into rocks. And, and while you're saying that, I'm looking over at my fruit basket because there was a line that got thrown over there. That baby is hard as a brick. And uh, you are absolutely right. They end up so hard, so hard. Um. Nitty T says the ball book has a wonderful blueberry lemon jam. Oh, and um, they're good resources. You know, I saw a ball book and I don't know why I didn't pick it up. But, you know, I think when we finish up lunchtime, I might have to take a little trip back over to the Goodwill and see if I can find that ball book. If no one grabs it, you know, so uh, I'll be able to grab it for about $3, a good ball book to be able to use. Now, in addition to finding the book, I was able to pick up a couple of jar sets. And when I say jar sets, that means it's a nice ball jar with the lid, with the, with the ring. And it also had its little lid. Now, to be honest with you, the they the lid looks like it might have been used now i'm going to throw it in the dishwasher and get it washed off and i can use it for whatever but i i already know that i'm going to put a new lid on it when i decide to actually can now nitty t do you um when you're canning do you uh, can vegetables as well because I know you can can green beans and carrots and, you know, potatoes and all those good things. Do you do that too? And if you do, do you pressure can or do you water can? That's something, something that I'd like to know. And I'm sure some others would love to know as well, because those are some of the things I'm looking for along the way. All right. So back to our fruits. Grapes. The grapes were really pretty. Um, I didn't see any kiwi on Saturday morning, but that's not to say they didn't have it. It was just, I was early. The, the fellow that worked in the produce section 
was just kind of getting started and he wasn't moving fast. I guess he had an eight hour day, so he was taking his time and that's okay. You know, that's okay. But I'm going to check them out and see what else they have. So kiwi, mango, papaya. This is a great time to be able to get those uh, fruits. And I know peaches are coming out. Uh, in fact, I saw a few. Now, I didn't buy one because for me, being a Southern girl, I'm thinking it's just a little bit early on those peaches that they're not going to be quite as sweet as what they will be a month from now. So I'm going to check. I'll, I'll be checking on those along the way. There have been tons of pineapple. So while you're shopping, even Walmart, Kroger, Wegmans, all of them have had um, pineapple. And the pineapples, I've gotten three so far, and they've all been delicious. Now, stone fruit is something that I am not very familiar with, but it is available, and I did see that. Hello, Tam. Glad to see you. And so uh, we want to be able to add those to our, our list as we're looking at um, our menu plan. Now, so these are some of the things, and there's some tips. Now, most of us who are here in the chat, we are seasoned cooks. And so some of this we already know. But I do know that we have some new and young home cooks that are coming to, to lunchtime as well, whether they come during the, the live or whether they come during the replay, we're glad to have them. So we're going to share a few things with them that we also want them to know. First of all, we want you to first, or we, can, we, we suggest to you that you take inventory, take inventory of the food you already have. Look in your refrigerator, look in your freezer. Very often you may have chicken, you may have some hamburger, you may even have fish or something like that. If you're a young home cook that may be in your freezer that you can certainly use first. You want to also then start to think about what your meals might be. Now, then you want to be mindful of your preferences, you know, who's in your household, who's going to eat it, you know, who's going to, um, if you have certain schedules that are going to go on through the week, you want to think about that. If you have a day that you already know that the kiddos have uh, base softball or baseball practice, then that's going to be a day that you either want a crock pot meal or you want something that you can prepare in advance and just have to slide into the oven and have it ready to go. You may have those who are in your household that have dietary restrictions, whether um, they're gluten free, whether there's certain fruits or vegetables that they like. We've got one who um, can eat pineapple. And so I, when I know she's going to be with me, then I know pineapple's out because she can't eat that. And we also want to be mindful of variety. We don't want to serve the same thing five days, you know, during the week. We want to be able to have some variety and also make it delicious. Then we want to sit down and write a grocery list. And this is my suggestion. And, and this is something I do today. I sit down. I look at what my plan is for the week off of my master grocery list, I mean my master meal plan, I write down every ingredient that I know, major ingredient that I know I'm going to need. Then this is what we're going to do is that from there, we're going to shop our pantry, which is right behind me, pantry. We're going to shop our refrigerator over there and we'll shop our freezer. We want to do that first because if we have certain items that are on the list, we can draw a line through those, draw a line through them so that you know that you already have those items in the house ready to go. 
So that kind of cuts the grocery list to begin with. Then once you've done those things and you're ready to go to the grocery. So once you've brought your groceries home, then you want to try to do a little prep in advance. You want to do the chopping. You want to do a little, put things into their marinades. If you can, put them in the Ziploc bags, put them in the freezer, have them ready to go. You want, if you can do the chopping for what you need for the week. If you need things cubed, if you need things diced, if you need things sliced and just slices, those are the things that you can separately prepare and prep for your week and have all of those things already in your refrigerator ready to go, our freezer ready to go. I like to cook my grains in, in, in advance, particularly I do my rice in advance. So when I'm making rice, I usually do large batch rice so that I'll pull out what I need for that particular day. I divide it into several bags. If I have a couple of meals that I'm going to need rice for, then I divide them into those bags and put them into the freezer. So then I just need to place them into the microwave, put them on a couple of minutes and bam, I've got nice, hot, fresh rice ready to go. Now, when you have time, particularly our new cooks, um, if you can cook in batches, and I suggest particularly things like your um, spaghetti sauces, uh, cook it in a, in a big batch so that you can eat for today and have a meal or two for other days or for other weeks. And um, that just helps to save you throughout the month. So it's not like you have to have spaghetti for multiple days. Now, for those of you who got the newsletter, I sent the newsletter out. Um, I was a little off last week. I tell you, it's, it's been busy for the month of April, but for, um, I thought I had sent the news, had actually hit send on the newsletter last week, and I didn't. So I sent it today. But you'll notice that I have what's called spaghetti soup that's in there. And that's one of the things that I, one of the items that I do with my spaghetti sauce. I cook the spaghetti sauce. We might have spaghetti sauce today over some type of pasta, just spaghetti. Then Another day, I'll put some away and I'll have a nice tall container of my spaghetti sauce that I can use if I wanted to do, say, lasagna for another week. And then I'll have another container that I can put together spaghetti soup, which is really good and has lots and lots of vegetables that you can just really dress up. But that's three different meals that no, after you get past the regular spaghetti and the, and, the, and the lasagna, when they think about the spaghetti sauce, there are so many flavors of uh, the spaghetti soup. There's so many flavors in there that it, it never really dawns on them that you've used your spaghetti sauce to make the soup. But it comes to the soup with such flavor already in advance. So that's a good way to be able to uh, put those things together. And think about the fact, all of us get into the point that we know life happens. We try our best to stick to the plan as closely as possible, but things happen. Things happen. And so we want to, uh, we want to be able to uh, provide good meals for our family in as um, easy a, a way to do it as we possibly can. Easy, delicious, quick, all of those things we want to be able to do. But you know that in order for it to be easy and quick, we've got some work to do. We've got a little bit of work to do. So we're going to go over here. And so we're going to look at the one plan for one month, and we're going to be doing it together. So this is going to be fun. I'm going to try this today and see if it works. 
So let's get back over to here. And let's see, you all are, let's see. Um, Nitty T says, is she pressure cans most of her vegetables? She said, uh, however, tomatoes can be water bath or pressure can. Oh, now that's good to know. That's good to know because I would love, I've never done tomatoes. So I am going to make it my mission to, uh, to have to uh, tomatoes in my pantry that I have canned. So I'm going to be working on that nitty tea. So I promise you, I'm going to show you the, my, my work. Um, Tutu said she recently bought some golden kiwi. Golden. Huh. I didn't know they even had golden kiwi. And she said they were sweeter than the green. So that's good to know. That's good to know. So I'm going to have to be on the lookout for the golden kiwi so I can try that out. I've had the green, but we'll try the golden and see how that works. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Marlene says she's had a few of those rocks too, where she's had the limes or the lemons to end up as those hard rocks, and you can't do a thing with them other than put them in the trash. Or I have even just put them out in the garden and just figure, okay, hopefully nature will take care of it and break it down. Um, oh, Marlene, we're so glad you got to go back to work. I know how it is. We're at the lunch table. That's the way it is. We got some in and we got some who have to go back. But we've certainly enjoyed that you've been here with us. Nitty T, you're saying that um, canning practices do uh, and they've changed. So she said, don't purchase a book that's more than 10 years old when you're when you're learning how to put food in jars. Ah, okay. So I guess I better. Now this one looks pretty new. And it says it's been updated and revised. I'm trying to look at the date. Um this is a oh, okay. It was updated in 2021. So I'm assuming that this water bath canning is pretty up to date. Now, the other one, let me look at the date on it and see. Oh, okay. It was also revised and actually it was revised in 2022. So I guess we're doing pretty good here with these two date wise. So um, like I said, if there's, if there's, I'm going to try to check both, both sources to make sure that I'm on the same page, but that is certainly something that I needed to know because, you know, sometimes books, particularly that are sitting in the Goodwill, someone's had for a while. And uh, so that's something that we, we do need, all of us need to know, whether it's a cookbook, whether it's a canning book, you know, all of that. And I'm sure that uh, I do know that uh, my daughter was looking at purchasing a pressure cooker. And um, sorry, when that happened, uh, when she got her, she had a, a canning book that was inside. And so I'll have to remind her to look and see and check the dates to make sure that it was pretty up to date. Hello, you had a meeting. Uh, Deb says she had a meeting and it was finally over. Oh, good, good, good. We're glad you're here. All right. Of those of you who are here in the chat, I got a little note from somebody who shared their bread that they made this weekend. But when the email came to me, it didn't tell me who you were. So I do know they had a beautiful loaf of bread. And uh, so if you're out there and uh, you did your, your bread this weekend, let me know. Let me know so we can let everybody know so I can share that. Now, she said, uh, Tutu said that this morning she did what she suggested. She checked the contents of her fridge, her freezer, her pantry. And uh, plenty of mushrooms enticed her to plan uh, to 
plan for a mushroom tart. Oh, that sounds good with brie and a refrigerator pastry dough. Yay! All right. So you've got, you already know that you've got two things that you're, well, you got your tart, you're going to be working on, and you got to have the pastry for that tart. So you're going to be putting that together. And that really does sound delicious. You know, I am thinking, I, I'm thinking this month, um, I have some friends who are going to be coming from out of town and they're going to be staying with me for seven days. So, you know, the girls got to get into the kitchen and start coming up with some fun things to do. But in addition to that, of course, we want to have fun, but we also want some delicious meals. And uh, that mushroom tart sounds pretty good. That might be, oh, that might be something I might have to put together. So uh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, Nitty T said, oh, that's perfect. Thank you. Uh, I am so excited to be able to do that. Now, Patricia said her meal plan changed for the week. She said, We're, oh, no, Patricia. Her fridge freezer broke down on Friday. She said it has served her well for 16 years. She said, so she really can't complain. But you know what? Oh, goodness. So did you have a backup refrigerator or freezer that you could kind of transfer things over to until you replaced it? Or um, I know the one we have out in the garage, I am just praying that it holds out. Um, it was it was actually in here. And um, when I bought a new one, I put the other one out because it had been around a while. And so and in fact, it's probably about 15 years. And uh, as it turned out, it had a moment where it had a hiccup and uh, we called uh, we have America American Home Shield. So. I called American Home Shield to have the guy come and see uh, how crazy it was going to be for them to repair it and if it was even worth repairing. And you know what? For a hundred dollars, he was able to repair that refrigerator and uh, it's working better now. Than it was when it was sitting right here in the kitchen and uh, it's just humming right along. So for a hundred bucks, it was well worth the fact that I can use it outside. It gives me a second refrigerator and a smaller freezer to be able to utilize. So that's been great. Um, Patricia says she's just happy that she had plenty of meals and meal starters in her garage freezer. That is wonderful. You know what? You know, I, I'm, I'm going to stop now and just uh, kind of say this. And I, I, Patricia has certainly warmed my heart with that. In that um, we, uh, as I look at what's going on across the United States, and when you think about the tornadoes that have been striking places, the bad weather. Uh, I think it was Deb Saturday who had snow out of the wazoo. You know, you've got crazy, crazy, crazy stuff that's going on across the nation. And, uh, you know, the winter's been a little interesting, you know, and the, the, the fall, the winter, the spring, you know, it's all been, you know, you just never know from day to day what's going to, what the weather's going to be and how things are going to be working. But it has said to me, it's spoken to me that preparation is necessary. We must, as home cooks, prepare. I'm not saying we got to go out and get crazy. I'm saying we need to, to do what Patricia has done, that she has meal, meal already in her freezer that is that that she can use, even though she had a blip with that refrigerator freezer. But 
because she had prepared, she didn't miss a beat. She didn't miss a beat. She was able to keep it moving and keep going. That is what it's all about. And for the young new home cook, we want them to be able to get to the point of where they can understand that thinking, that preparation is valuable. It is valuable. It's not something that your mama did. It's not just something that your grandmother used to do. It is something that all of us need to do because we don't know from one day to the next what's going to be taking place, whether it's our refrigerator going out, stove going out, microwave going out, or if it's a bad storm and the power goes out, you know, so those are things we want to be able to think about. Michelle, how are you? It's so good to have you here. Patricia said that that uh, with her, uh, Patricia's refrigerator had, had a moment. And um, Michelle knows this. I know she knows this, that we're preparing all the time that we need things in the refrigerator. We need things that are going to be in our, our freezers, whether it's in the house or in the garage. And thank goodness that we're able to, for those of us who have been in, I'll say in the business of being the home cook for a while, whether it's five years or 10 years, you know, if we have an additional appliance, sometimes on Facebook uh, Marketplace, we can get a refrigerator that can go in our in our garage or it may be someone at church who just wants to get rid of a refrigerator you know that they're not using uh, then put it in in your garage then that gives you a backup or a freezer i know i have given i have donated freezers over the years that i've donated to someone else and uh, Michelle, I see, I see. So Patricia was able, she said she was able to put a lot in the garage, but she lost her milk and some of the leftovers. Well, you know, I'm not, I'm not belittling any of that because certainly uh, milk's one of those things that it's not going to last a long time. And uh, depending upon the size of your freezer, I have taken that container of milk and just stuck it in the freezer just so I could try to hold on to it and uh, use it for something else. But sometimes that doesn't work. And if you had leftovers from the week, then let's face it, you know, you've had them for your meal. So this week you're able to move on. We thank the Lord for that, for being able to do that. Uh, she said that a new, fr ah, it's going to be here Wednesday. Yay. You know, there's just something about a new refrigerator that just makes me so excited of having that new fridge. It just gives you a whole new idea of things that you can do in that refrigerator. So Patricia, I know that you're going to be looking forward to that new fridge and you're thinking about already now what you're going to put in it and how you're going to set it up and all those good things. So share that with us next Monday when we're on. I can't wait to see that. Um, Michelle said that she wants to be able to get a freezer for a garage once she cleans out the garage. Well, you know, I don't know about you, but uh, it just seems like our garage, Lord have mercy, it is always a work in progress. So I just try to uh, work around. I have a corner of the garage that has my name on it. So nothing, nothing that belongs to the big guy and, and the grass and the hole to do. None of that goes in my corner. So that's my spot. That's my spot in the garage. Oh, hello, hello. Um, she's saying that also we can check our local appliance stores because they typically have discounted deep freezers. Princessa, you are absolutely right. And in fact, I don't know where you are, but this is something you can check in too. Look for scratch and dent because now my freezer that's out in the garage, I was able to get at the Sears 
uh, scratch and dent the store. And it has a little dent that's about this big on it. Now, it was that dent, if I were going to buy it new, it would, I, I would not have been happy with having a dent on it. But I got a deep discount because of that dent. So I was able to get it. Who sees it? Nobody sees it but me. So I'm good with it. So scratch and dents, discounted uh, deep freezers at uh, appliance stores. And, you know, sometimes you're absolutely right. Those local appliance stores like Lowe's, Home Depot, some of those places, if you get to know and kind of talk to the people who are in those appliance areas, very often they will have appliances that are sitting in the back where they've gotten dented, they're still in good shape, but they can't put them out on the main floor. And so uh, sometimes you can really work a good deal. That's a great idea. Oh, Patricia, you better know it. God is good. And we are so blessed. You are blessed. We are blessed as a community of being able to come together and to take the time together to, uh, you know, talk about the things that are affecting us. Now, what I want you all to do in the chat, what I'd like for you to do is to give me now, why don't you think like a new cook? Think like a new cook. Now, these are, I'm going to give you five of my ideas for the new cook, somebody who's new coming into the kitchen. Give me five meal ideas that you think a new cook would be able to put together pretty easy and delicious, okay? Five meal ideas. So I'm going to give you time to start and I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to even put mine in. Okay. So let's see. I've got, uh, I'm thinking, uh, well, I gave you one earlier. We had burgers. All right. Got burgers that they can adapt and play around with. I even thought of fried rice. Um, uh, they may not know how to do fried chicken, but they might be able to bake the chicken. Baked uh, chicken. Let's see. What else? Oh, spaghetti. Of course. Five ideas. One, two, three, four. I need one more. Oh. Okay, guys, here's mine. Here are my five. I'm putting them in the in the box. All right, I've got burgers. Oh, good. Mac and cheese. Let me put, put Debs in. Deb said mac and cheese. Now, I'm jotting this down on, on my one month, one plan. I'm going to put this in, in our, I've got mac and cheese. For new cooks, we got chili, we've got BBQ, yeah, they can get some of that um, good barbecue sauce and put over whatever they want to put it over, beef, chicken, baked chicken, we were on the same page with that, baked chicken, oh, tuna cat, do you all know how many tuna casseroles I have made, Lord have mercy. So many. Let's see what else we got. Um, like I said, I put in, I also had burgers, fried rice, baked chicken. Um, spaghetti. Got our grilled cheese. I'm putting it on our list. Okay, let's see what else we got. We've got, uh, oh, a taco bar. Oh, that would be good. Taco bar, tuna melt. Absolutely. We've got uh, mac and cheese we had. Okay. Let's see what else. We got just tacos. And you know, in May, 
we got our Cinco de Maya. So we can start adding in some tacos. Ooh, that's going to be good. Oh, we got pizza using a store-bought crust. Woohoo! We got pizza. Uh, hot dogs, slaw and beans. Ooh, that sounds good. Hot dogs. Slaw and beans. Let's see what else. Oh, let's see. Sue said spaghetti with meat sauce. Oh, yeah, we got spaghetti with um, uh, meatballs. We got just, we're going to spaghetti it, girl. Meat sauce, meatballs. Okay, we've got, uh, oh, a vegetable soup. That's true, and that is so easy to put together. Uh, we got our baked chicken. We got tacos. We got burgers. Oh, the burger, you know, burgers. Okay, so let me have an area for burgers, and that's going to be, we could do tuna burgers. We could do salmon burgers. Of course, our regular hamburgers. Oh, this is great, great, great. Uh, whoo, a quiche. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, baked fish. Absolutely. Whatever kind of fish they like. Um Got ham, oh, it's a hamburger mac and cheese. Kids love that. You know, throw a little cheese on it. They're going to like it. Hamburger, they like it. <laughs> Chicken soup. Woohoo. Uh, ah, an Italian sausage spaghetti sauce. Okay. All right. What else we got? Oh, let's see. Oh, a pasta salad with mixed vegetables. And we could even add chicken and uh, our tuna to that pasta salad with our vegetables, with lots of vegetables. Mixed veggies. Yummy, yummy. Uh, baked potatoes and meatloaf. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that sounds good. How about a baked potato bar? And that could be as, as advanced or as simple as we want it to be. Add a little meat, a little vegetables, a little everything on that bar. That would be good too. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, baked beans and hot dogs. I love baked beans and hot dogs. Yummy, yummy. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Okay, we've got a tuna salad. Yummy, yummy. Chicken salad. Yes, yes, yes. And you know, all of these are things that going into um, the spring and summer, these are certainly things that we're going to want to be able to put together. Oh, shepherd's pie, Michelle. You are right. I see that. Those are going to be things, lots of salads that we're going to want to do for the summer as it warms up. And yes, it is going to warm up eventually. I know for some of you, I know today is cool for us. We've been having uh, 70, 75, 80 degrees, and today is 50. So while that might not be cold to some, it's a little chilly <laughs> to me. But uh, certainly those are fun things. Oh, you're hungry now. Me too. I haven't, I haven't had a thing. I've had this little, I've been sipping on this cup of coffee since about nine o'clock this morning. Tastes more like iced coffee at this point, but you know what? That's that. So, guys, I just want you to see 
we have filled out i had spots for our 30 30 days and we are just whoops wrong one we are just about there and uh let's see what what i had uh what about grilled steak that we could put in there some grilled steak that might be easy um they could even just throw that on the bar on the grill if they have a grill or just throw it in a pan um they could do um you know the sausage and peppers that they could either just have the sausage and peppers and some vegetables or a salad they could do sausage and peppers and uh, put them in a bun and uh, have it more as a sandwich so sausage and peppers is something we can add now i can't wait i've got one two three four five six slots of things that i'm going to add to this list so we have put together a a list oh pot roast yes yes that is easy and that's easy whether you have a crock pot or not now you know i have to say probably in today's world most new cooks probably have a crock pot and that may be the only thing they have they may not have a skillet but they probably have some sort of pot, crock pot and what best meal to be able to put in a crock pot is a pot roast it's easy and uh delicious oh michelle michelle's adding she's got a tuna macaroni salad Ma tuna salad macaroni salad or even a tuna mac tuna a tuna macaroni salad I, li I like those too and they look pretty on the table we've got potato salad And we could just have just a green salad that we start green, add vegetables, and then put some, some baked chicken on our, our fish on that salad. Oh, Michelle's getting fancy. She's got an orange uh, chipotle chickens. Oh, that sounds delicious. Orange chipotle chicken. Okay, um, let's see. We got a few more. A marinated flanker skirt steak. Oh, yummy, yummy. And there's so much you can do with flank steak and skirt steak. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm writing. I got quiet on you. Okay, Sue said... Um, stir fries absolutely that marinated flank steak mm. i the bulgogi you can do bulgogi once you fix the steak if you have any leftover put bulgogi sauce on it throw it over some rice mm, that's good okay stir fries and that's something we I, we didn't have stir fries and and there is a world of things we can do with stir fries chicken alfredo oh and you know the nice thing is once you bake the chicken you can do so many different things and alfredo is one of those things and let's face it bertoli's has a good alfredo sauce chicken alfredo guys this is amazing we have had so much fun this has been great being able to put these together patricia i am so glad you were able to join us today at lunchtime and to be honest with you it's time to go to work we've all got to go to work we've been we've been at the lunch table for an hour and mwah, 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 to all of you i hope you have certainly enjoyed today and all of you all of you you know what we were focused on the young home cooks 
Oh, oh, you like Ro oh Roma. I, you know, I don't know that I've tried Roma Alfreda. Alf Alf I'm gonna have to look for that, Michelle. Oh, it's Raina. Okay. And okay, I'm gonna have to look for that because that sounds pretty good. I am so happy that all of you have been here. Meatloaf. All right. And you know, meatloaf is easy to put together as well. And that's one of those things, to be honest with you, as a young cook, man, meatloafs can go a long way. And plus, they're great sandwiches the next day. So, chef salad. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Now, to all of you, it really has been a lot of fun. And uh, we are, our minds are revving now. We are revving. And, you know, the hungrier we are, the more things that we're going to think of to put on this list. Oh, you're retired. Okay. Okay. You're retired. I'm retired too. But I, I had, I, you know, I told you I had friends coming. And uh, so this morning when I got up, of course, you know, I always do laundry. That's the first thing every day and try to wipe down everything, you know, as we're going through the house, because this is our Monday blessing, house home blessing. And uh, then I went, opened the door of the linen closet in the, in the guest bathroom and thought, I haven't looked at that for a while. And so I went in there and I pulled everything out of that pan, out, out of that, out of that linen closet. And so I got to get all this stuff back in the linen closet and try to do it nicely so it will look nice when company opens the door. Now, are they are they really, you know, the fun thing about having it, they are company in that they're coming from out of town, but they are certainly family. And so um, we're going to have a great time together. And, you know, I can't wait. I can't wait. Now, I'm hoping we'll see if she'll do it. But I've told you about a friend that I have who has been my friend for life. And we have been like sisters from even before the big guy and I got married. She was the wife of the big guy's best friend. And I'm so hoping that she's going to come to the lunch table with us uh, when they arrive. So. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that she's going to come because I know she has some great nuggets of wisdom to share with all of us that she's going to be able to just kind of ideas of things that she might think we might want to add to it. And so um, I can't wait. So I'm going to get to play and go back to my bathroom and get the guest bathroom in order. And uh, also, I'm going to put this list together in a better form for all of us and share with all of you. Now, if there's anyone out there who's who's in our chat or in the replay who has not had an opportunity to be a part of the newsletter, the newsletter, this week's newsletter is going to be coming out like it's supposed to on this regular day. So. I'm going to send it out. I think I'm going to start making Wednesday the day that I send it out because that's just a, a good day for that for me. So I'm going to shoot that out and we'll, it will have our one plan for one month because I want you to have this in hand. Please share it with someone so that if you know that there's someone who is a new cook or a new homemaker who just needs a kind idea, please share what we've put together today because this is valuable. This is valuable for us. It's going to be valuable for them. And so uh, I'm looking forward to putting it down. I'm looking forward to sharing a few more things and uh, we're going to have a great time together. Thank you to all of you for taking the time to be here at the lunch table. So without further ado, I don't want to hold you up and we're going to get our afternoon taken care of. Enjoy. Mwah! 
Have a blessed week. And uh, don't forget, shorts are going to be coming out this week, and they're kind of funny. So, But I think you'll enjoy it. So have fun and uh, enjoy your week. Be blessed. I'll see you soon.